All right. A while back, I did this video comparing Falco X to Betaflight. We did some flights on defaults. Then I did some custom tunes on that as well. I did a follow-up Patreon video about it. And today, we're going to do the final testing to put that to rest and see if what I noticed is real. So if you haven't checked out that video series, I'll make a link to the playlist that has this video and the others in the upper right and down in the video description, and you can check those out. In these flights, we're using the good old test quad, and on this, we had Falco X on the bottom, and that was flying the quad, and then we had a Betaflight flight controller on the top. They were both wired to the same receiver, so when Falco X would arm, Betaflight would arm, and then the Betaflight flight controller, we could get logging, so we could track the stick inputs, because the receiver was going to both at the same time, split the signal, basically. And then the Betaflight flight controller had a gyro on it, and of course, that tracks the quad movement, just like the gyro does on the Falco X board. So with that, even though Falco X does not have logging, we were able to use Betaflight to do the logging of the quad movements and the stick commands. And that's really what matters, right? We're providing stick commands with our transmitter and then the quad moves. Those are the two basic things that are going on. And when I was doing those tests, I noticed some weird things in regard to fast yaw movements. That when I was doing fast yaw movements, I thought I noticed that it was like kind of going off course on the roll and pitch access, which was making it awful hard to do inverted yaw spins because I was kind of losing control that that's what I thought at least on those two different axes. So I want to take a closer look at that. So I'm going to run a couple of flights and on that I'm going to do a black box overlay. And when you see these trace lines, this green line is the command. So that means on the roll axis, as you can see here, we're not making any command. You can see roll is right in the middle here. We're not commanding left, we're not commanding right. The roll is holding steady. Same with pitch. Now yaw, you can see on this one, we're actually commanding a, a pretty stern yaw move. And the cyan line here, that's the actual quad movement. So ideally, the cyan line follows the green line all the time, the entire flight, no matter what. And if the cyan line is not following the green line, that means the quad's movement, it's doing a roll and you're not commanding a roll. That's bad, that throws you off. Same thing for pitch and then yaw. So you can see down here with yaw, it's starting to yaw and that's we're commanding a yaw move. Now it's not exactly following it, but you know, it's at least, close and here these two in this example are pretty far off so first up here we're going to take a look at falco x with sim mode turned on and i had sim boost all the way up i also had it tuned so it was just on the verge of having bounce back and the most amount of i term i could have as well for not having i term bounce back so I put the Falco X PIDs I used on the upper right up here. You can check those out for the roll pitch and y'all. And again, just basically there's a max amount of P, max amount of I, and high D terms as well. Apologies in advance for the HD on this. It was fairly dark. It actually didn't seem that bad with the FPV camera, but uh, the GoPro didn't pick it up so well. I tried to lighten it up the best I can. You can kind of just look at the traces and look at the lights to kind of see that bobble uh, that we're experiencing. Now, I was really thinking that the problem was sim mode. Through the code leak thing that Falco X had and were through the grapevine, we kind of know how uh, sim mode works. It basically doubles down on the P term based on how much sim boost you give it. And then it drops the I term and the D term. And I could easily see how a fast yaw input would make that kind of that bounce occur that we saw there because it 
they lost control of I term. It doesn't really totally explain why P term wouldn't have uh, dampened that, but you know, I don't really know what's going uh, under the code in the background to uh, not control the other two axes when you're doing these hard yaw moves. So with that, I then tried to disable sim mode, which you can't do unless you disable the anti-aliasing filter on the D term for some reason. Oh, it's weird. So somebody gave me that tip. So I was able to disable the anti-aliasing filter and then ultimately disable sim mode. And then let's see what we get in the next flights. So unfortunately, my theory, as you saw, was not correct. And i not saying that it's not correct. I just don't think you can actually disable SIM mode. I don't think SIM mode was actually disabled between the two. You can see that the stick response and the tracking between SIM mode enabled with SIM boost at five, which is the max, and then SIM mode disabled was exactly the same. So either SIM mode doesn't really do anything or it doesn't really disable. Both of those are bad. So, um, yeah, I don't think you can fix this in Falco X without uh, them making code changes. So the next thing I wanted to do is I wanted to take the wires from the Falco X flight controller here on the bottom that's actually flying the quad and then I put them onto the Betaflight flight controller. So the Betaflight flight controller is actually sending the signals to the ESC. So let's see if this is just an inherent issue with the quad. Okay, so yeah, you can see it's much better, and I was not crazy. I did not remember this issue being on with Betaflight 4. Point, you know, whatever, 4.2, 4.3. I just don't remember this issue, period, on this quad. Same thing even when I was flying KISS on this quad. I didn't notice. Uh, there was other issues with KISS. You know, Falco X and KISS both have a lot of throbble issues that I also don't think you can really fix because they don't have, like, an anti-gravity. They don't have a way to boost... Um, the P gains or I gains uh, with start throttle moves. But with KISS, I didn't notice this uh, loss of control on the other axis. And again, uh, we have the max P, the max I. You saw the I term bounce back there already because Simbo doesn't really track the sticks that well. So you boost up I term even more on these other two axes to control the loss of control there because uh, it's a slow kind of loss of control, a drifting loss of control. And you're going to get more I term bounce back. And P term, you could see how the line came down to touch the set point with sim mode on or off, which doesn't really make any difference. I, I think it's sim mode just on the whole time with sim mode on at sim boost of five, and then had that I bounce. Well, if add more P term, that means it's going to overshoot. 
and then you're going to have the I term bound. So we had enough P term, so it didn't overshoot on with P term, but it, it did have that I term bounce before it settled back. And that's just because all the uh, pit error had between, you know, the commanded inputs and then Falco X, uh, you know, being able to do a, a fast enough command to uh, actually follow the sticks. So that covered P term and I term. And adding D term, adding more damping, is not going to help solve this lack of control thing. So, yeah, uh, it, it, it just kind of is what it is. Now, if there's something you feel I truly am missing on this, uh, welcome those comments down below. Let me know, and I can take a look at it. I still have a flight controller here, so I can wire it back up and uh, take a look at it. But I'm, I'm pretty sure I got everything. But nevertheless, you know, nobody's perfect. But, uh, yeah. Looked at this a little bit. I just didn't take 15 seconds on this. The other thing, hopefully you've noticed that Betaflight just tracks the sticks uh, so much better. Uh, you know, I, I think fee forward around two point uh, or 200 something, 230 something like that, and uh, really just on the stick. So I could even go a little bit higher in fee forward. You can go high enough fee forward. You actually the quad will go faster than your your inputs. I've said it a couple times now. I I've not seen any firmware track better than beta flight none so for stick tracking and feel at this point beta flight is where it's at if there's another firmware that tracks just as well love to see it but honestly i just haven't seen it to date okay well that is it hopefully you found this information helpful if you enjoyed this video please do consider giving it a thumbs up thanks everybody and i'll see you on the next one